we've set up a simple way for you to give to our church online. If you want to give a quick gift, enter an amount, select a fund, then enter your email address and your first and last name. Then enter your payment details and click Give. And that's it. We'll send a receipt to your email address. To use a saved payment method or manage a recurring donation, you'll want to log in. Click the Login button and we'll send a code to your phone or email account. Verify the code and you're in. Now your payment info is ready to go when you want to make a donation. To manage your giving details, switch over to the My Giving page. Here you'll see more ways you can give. You can also add a payment method, like a bank account or a debit card, set up a recurring donation, and view your giving history. Well, good morning. It's good to be with you today. We're just so thankful that we can call upon the name of the Lord to know that He is the answer. So we just want to take the next few moments and believe in with all of our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, that we know that soon he will be coming back. And so I believe the Lord is awakening hearts and lives in our world today. We may call this the last days, but can I also tell you, this is the day, I know we use the word many times from Scripture, this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. But I do believe that the word of the Lord is truth. And I believe that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So I look to the Lord today and call upon his name as we take these next few moments together. It is such an honor to be able to call on the name of Jesus. It is an honor to me. Because there is such a hunger. I feel like there is an awakening of hunger and thirst. That is re renewing in our hearts and lives today. And I'm so thankful for that. I know there's challenges. I know we can say it's a day like none other. But God is still God. And Jesus is still Lord. And so we give him praise and glory. I just feel my heart being touched today to take us into the word of the Lord from John chapter 10. I found myself feeling like, you know, in this day in which we live, this is still, through the Lord, a good life. So I want to title our time together this morning, Living the Good Life. I believe where the Lord is, there is liberty. I believe when Jesus said, there's not one good, or don't even call me good, Jesus said, but the Father. So in his goodness, it is, you know, this is living the good life through the Lord. Jesus Christ in John chapter 10. He said it in verse 7. Then Jesus said to them again. In other words, he is reminding or repeating or wanting to be sure that, what he is saying is getting across. So he says it again. Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. He recognizes, he refers to us, his children, ones of us that are willing to call and accept and open up our heart to call him Lord and Savior of our life, to follow him. He, he calls us sheep. And isn't that awesome that we will follow the shepherd who he said he is the door of the sheep. And then verse 8 says, And all who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, Jesus said, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Satan himself has been referred to as the thief. We know that he wants to come. You can't get 
any more brutal or evil than someone that wants to come in in a way to steal or kill or to destroy. But aren't you thankful Jesus, the chief shepherd, the way in, the door of life. He said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence today. Jesus went on to say in verse 11 of John 10, I am the good shepherd. This is the good life, church. Jesus is the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Then he gives us another warning, but a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep. It is so easy today to feel like that we can be scattered. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus is not here for those that are being scattered. He is here wrapping his arms around us. But it says, but a hireling is he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf come and leaves the sheep and flees. Have you ever seen where it seems like people are out for themselves? It's only about more them. As long as they can get something out of you, then it seems like that's what they're looking to do. But, oh, Lord, give us your heart today. Oh, to have that shepherd's heart. Oh, to have a heart that is after the Lord. To have a desire to be able to touch ones and see a renewed hunger happen in their life and a thirst that is what my heart yearns for today is that you will be able to find your way today into the presence of the lord of lords and the king of kings if you are in sickness you will find the healer if you are in need you will find the provider if you are in seeking direction for your life you will find the savior and he will give you guidance and all of this lines up for the answer to be jesus today and for him to come in this place for your heart wherever you are however you're joining in with me by this message today that we are living the good life some people call living the good life being able to travel the world or being able to have the home of their dreams or the automobile of their desire. Many different ones seem to have it, what we call today, made. They have arrived. But I need to tell you, the Bible is very clear that every one of us is going to pass the same. We're all going die whether we die in a very expensive outfit or whether it's in pauper clothing i'm here to tell you jesus is able to be lord not because of your bank account or not because of the lack thereof but it's because of you able to call upon him he is looking for hearts that will be open today and all that we have it may be a lot that we have. It may be overwhelming much that we are able to impact this world with the goods that we have been able to acquire. What a wonderful place for that to be, that we could be able to impact for the Lord Jesus Christ this entire world of the blessings in our life. Yet then on the other hand, if we seem to have very minimal but the Lord still supplying the need and giving the satisfaction and the peace that we know that he is able to continue to release into our life. To me, that is the good life. It's having that peace that passes all understanding. So I love what Jesus has to say. He went on to say, in verse 14 July uh, of, 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 of here in in the word of the Lord uh, of, of knowing that we are able to call upon him in John chapter 
four, 10, chapter 10, verse 14. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, Jesus said, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Anybody thankful that Jesus gave himself, that he died on the cross, but he rose from the grave, amen? But he went on to say, he said, I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. So by being crucified, he rose from the grave. This command I have received from my Father. Therefore, there was a division again among the Jews because of these sayings. Isn't that amazing? A division again. It wasn't the first time because the Lord was laying out the place that he had come to fulfill to be the Savior of the world. And it's hard for ones to want to look beyond what they can physically hear and understand. But our understanding is so limited compared to the faith that we can use to lean upon the Lord and to walk into the unseen and to know that we walk not by sight, but we have to walk by faith to believe what a place to be. That is the joy today. That is what we're able to call upon today. So I know that as we call upon the Lord, it just simply goes on to say when Jesus gave these words and said there was a division again among the Jews because of these sayings. And many of them said, he has a demon and is mad. That's what they were saying about Jesus. Why do you listen to him? Boy, does that fit our day to day. So really... All of this that we want to call chaos or all of this that seems to be confusion from the world. And when you come into the place of Jesus, it's really not as confused as it would seem because the Lord will give the place in your heart and in your mind to be able to come to grips. And he, through the Holy Spirit, will open up your understanding in ways that you will be able to trust him. When you don't have the answers, you will say, wait a minute. This is enough just to know you, Jesus. This is enough just to have this peace. This is enough because you're the good shepherd, because you're guiding me, because I know in the uncertainty of today, you are still my foundation. I am still moving and living and going forward because right now through you all things are possible and you are my way maker that's his word that's the peace that we have today oh do you be the glory father for your word is ever so true aren't you so thankful that in the midst of where it seemed like division would be jesus still is able to give us that stability in this day I fully believe that we have to have a heart that is open. There's many, their heart is closed. In verse 25 of John chapter 10, Jesus answered and told them, he said, I told you, you and you do not believe. In other words, I've given you the answer. I've given you all that you need to know. He explained the works that I do in my father's name. They bear witness of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep, hear my voice. Are you willing to let your heart open up today to hear the shepherd? Are you willing right now to agree with me that we are of his fold? We are of his flock? Because we must hear his voice today. He said, and I know them. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they follow me. That's the difference, is that we are willing to follow Jesus. I believe that there are many around this world that are willing to follow Jesus, and they hear his voice, and they are willing to let him bring their life into an alignment that they are desiring to seek the Lord, to be able to bring glory to his name and that there through him is their joy found. Hallelujah. 
Oh, somebody praise Him with me right now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. How we magnify Your name. Went on to say in verse 29, My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. We have been speaking a lot lately about greater is here. Or taking the last two letters off of the word here and emphasizing on greater is he. We will continue no doubt to do that in the near future in different service settings. It's just where the Lord is reminding us that he is greater. Whatever the giants or whatever the mountains or whatever the valley, he is greater than, more than. And so here it says again, in that verse 29, My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my hand, and I and my Father are one. But you know the reply of those that will not receive Jesus. Look at verse 31. It says, Then the Jews took up stones again. Do you know that's the third time in this chapter as we've highlighted some verses that it's used the word again? Here it is, it says, this time that the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, many good works I have shown you from my Father. From which of those works do you stone me? Why do you want to take my life? I'm only showing you the good life. That's what we titled it, did we not? Living the good life. Jesus said, I'm showing you the, the good life, the works. Of all of those which do you stone me of. And then Jesus and the Jews answered him in verse 33 saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy. Because you being a man make yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods, if he called them gods to whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken. Do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into this world you are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God? If I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do through you, it says, but if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore they sought to seize him, but he escaped out of their hand. God will make a way as he did for Jesus. He will make a way for you and for me because we are in Jesus as Jesus is in the Father. I'm not trying to say today that we are making ourselves God. But I am saying today, we are here to represent our Heavenly Father, our God of all gods, because there's really no other God. There definitely is no other God before Him. That is His Word. That is our foundation. And we are so thankful that God so loved us that He sent His only begotten Son. Who is this Son? Jesus just declared it. We read it in John 10. He said, I am the Son of God. So we know Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus said, I came to be that forerunner of the promise, the promise of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit could come. And it came on the day of Pentecost, in the, like coming in the form of a mighty rushing wind. It came and it set as a tongue of fire upon them, and they began to speak with other tongues. Oh, be filled with the Holy Spirit today and let the Holy Spirit empower us that it is promised that you would be empowered from on high that we would be witnesses i believe we must be disciples making disciples today and how do you do that as sheep having sheep is that we are able to become to that point that the joy of the lord is very contagious and the strength of the Lord, even in the midst of crisis, while tears are weeping and while sorrow is overtaking us, we still have a foundation of certainty that Jesus, every step of the way, he is in control. So I come today to encourage you to lean upon him. Lean upon the everlasting arms. Jesus is now and will always be what we need so father we thank you for your presence today 
We're so thankful that in you we are living the good life. Not from the physical standpoint. That will not, never measure up. But the spiritual standpoint that exceeds anything we could ever have on this earth. As wonderful as that may be, we are so thankful that you exceed it all. And Father, in the midst of it all, we know you're going to continue to make a way for everyone that receives this message today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Today is my prayer till we meet again.